Okay, it's the 1st of June and I wanted to show you how tall my rye is. Isn't this wonderful? Good farmers are able to grow amazing things. So this is really great. <laughs> okay, I'm a liar. Okay, now I'm gonna stand up. This is how tall it actually is. Come here, Tim. Get over here. Okay, here's Tim Jenkins. He's one of my students for the 17 week farmer training program. And he said that I should get kneel down so it looked taller, so it's all his good idea. So isn't this great? Anyway, this is the rye. We're so excited about it. Hopefully this video will help you to grow a beautiful, wonderful cover crop. Can you see lots of the fields still? Yeah. I'm trying to... Scream out, Tim. I think that's pretty good. Today is the 1st of June, and we just wanted to do a quick update on this cover crop field that you've been watching for a good nine months now. So the rye has shot up. That's the fun thing about springtime, is it shoots up. So last month, I don't remember, but you could probably it was about at my knees. So in the last four weeks, it's shot up to right here. So it's approaching a good feet tall maybe more than that because for a four foot piece of plywood when I stand to it comes right there so I can grab it and carry it around so that's four feet on me and the rye is like right here so quite a few of them are getting to a good three feet a lot of them are down lower but it's doing good I am disappointed though because there's not enough rye in here it's not thick enough for me to be able to roll it down and have it smother things out. So that's a disappointment. The hairy vetch is going to bloom. So it has these beautiful flowers on it right here. I'm gonna pick a couple and we're gonna come up. I actually have a cameraman today, so we can actually get this up close maybe. Okay, so this is what the hairy vetch looks like when it's uh, blooming and it's very beautiful and wonderful. It kind of has a very faint smell, but it's not like a really aromatic, wonderful flower. But they're fun, and they're beautiful, and they're glorious, and they're just beginning to bloom. So this is blooming here, but there's a lot of little buds on this side that still haven't opened. So it's blooming wonderful, and as you look across the field, I can't see any, but when I come out and look down, there's quite a few that are blooming. The rye is heading out wonderful, so this will be clear full of edible grain that we can make uh, food out of, all kinds of food. Anything you'd grind grain into for flour, you can eat rye. Uh, but it's pretty sweet right now. When you chew on those stems and suck the juice out, they're yummy to eat at this time of year. So it's super fun to come down in here. We're looking down in here. If we pull some of this up, we have the, the mustard weed in here. Where did it go? Right here, this is the mustard that's, it's not really desirable. And here's the hairy vetch. And that's the same one that had the beautiful purple flower. Here's a flower right here. So that goes with the, with this. And then there's these native grasses that are going to seed. And these are the ones we want to kill out. We want to kill out a lot of these native plants that are in here. Now, traditionally, what we used to do is we would till this down. This would be the stage when we would come in and would disc it down, would till it down, trying to get away from that. Now, I do some tillage once in a while, but in fact, we did some tillage and we planted some gardens in some bigger fields here. But those are fields that are not normally agricultural fields, they're pastures. <laughs> and in order to grow a food crop this year, we needed to till it to grow a food crop. And that's not a bad thing to do. But long term, you don't want to be tilling for the same reasons I've told you in hundreds of videos before this. 
So what will we do with this field? What are our options? Because the rye is not big enough, it's not thick enough, simply because it didn't grow enough, because on this brand new desert soil, it just didn't do as good as I hoped it would. But, so our options are, we could mow it down, we could roll or crimp it down, we could um, let it go to seed, and we could harvest the rye. I mean, it's way up here, it wouldn't be hard to harvest a food crop. We could just come in here and cut these off, because they're going to get taller. I don't know how much taller, but they will get taller. So when these start to dry out and the grains are completely the right size inside of the inside of this flower head here, when the the grains are big and ready to eat, then we could uh, harvest those for food. That'd be good for any kind of an animal that wanted to eat them. Like chickens, it'd be great to, uh, to feed these to a flock of chickens. Pigs would do good on them. I mean, any kind of livestock would eat this and it'd be good. Um, humans can eat this. Rye bread is very, very good. So those are our options. We could mow it. We could let it go to seed and then harvest it. <coughs> and then the third option is to roll it down. I don't think I'm going to roll it down. But I haven't decided yet. But it's not ready to roll down now anyway. What you want to do, there's a term called anthesis, and we're looking for the seed heads to be in anthesis, and that's when the that's when the pollen is coming out of these and falling off. And that is not happening yet. So I don't know when that'll happen. I think in the last video I was talking about how I was worried that this might take too long. Because if I plant the if I roll this down and plant it after the 20th of June, so that's only 20 days away, I won't have enough time before our first frost to grow another food edible crop. So if I do mow this or till it down or whatever I end up doing, I need to plant before the 20th to be able to get a food crop harvested. Now, I don't have to plant a food crop here. I could just plant another cover crop. We could just harvest this rye and then mow it real good so it's just a nice mulch out here and then we could go in and we could plant another set of rye again we could do oats again because oats generally ripen before rye but the, a lot of oats won't handle a cold winter so if we have a really cold winter they may not survive and so that so there's a lot of technical things about how to do this to do it right but what we know that we're doing right and what I'm absolutely thrilled about is the fact that this field right here is growing lush and when I look down I cannot see the ground. You know, way up at the very end there's some places I can see the ground. But when I'm walking through here and I'm looking down all I can see is green. There's no ground. If I split this and open it up I still do not see the ground. And that is perfect. So our ground is completely covered. And that is exactly what we want. So this soil is on the road to functioning. And so this is awesome. So take a look at this field. This is what it looks like on the 1st of June. I should have filmed it like this. Just say, yeah, it's, it's almost six feet tall. <laughs> okay, hopefully this has helped you to grow your own wonderful cover crop.